In part A, we are asked to figure out how many years it's going to take light to travel from a star to Earth. And most of us remember from Physics 101 that the travel time that an object requires is equal to the distance divided by the speed. In this case, the speed is going to be the speed of light. So we can actually replace the symbol V with the symbol for the speed of light, which is typically the letter C. So we only simply have to plug in the value for the distance given in the question, which was 6.44 times 10 to the power of 18 meters, divided by the speed of light, which is approximately 3 times 10 to the eighth, and then that will be in meters per second. Now, the only problem here is the question wants us to calculate the number of years. If we left the calculation like this, we would get the number of seconds. So we have to make a conversion from seconds into years. To do that conversion, it's going to be helpful to realize that the seconds down here in the meters per second will algebraically move up to the top. Basically, when you divide by a fraction, the denominator of that fraction moves up to the numerator. And so we'll actually just adjust this so that the seconds comes up here on top. And the reason that's nice is because it's going to help us do the conversion. For instance, we all know perhaps that one hour is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. So if we set up a conversion in that manner, the seconds will cancel out and we would be left with hours. But then we all know that one day is 24 hours. So if we multiply by that conversion factor, the hours would cancel and we would be left with days. And then finally, to get it into years, we all know that one year is about 365 days. So the days would cancel out, leaving us with the answer in years. So you'll punch this very carefully into your calculator, and when you do so, you should get about 681 years. And this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Moving on to part B, we need to figure out how long it takes for sunlight to reach Earth. So it's a very similar type of calculation. We're going to be doing time is equal to the distance divided by the speed of light. We're going to have to look up the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And that's probably a value given in your textbook. I looked it up and it happens to be 1.496 times 10 to the power of 11 meters. Again, that's the distance from the Sun to the Earth. We'll divide this by the speed of light. Again, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We probably have to make another conversion here, so we're going to actually move the seconds back up to the numerator to help us make that conversion. Be careful here, this is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And it's likely your homework system wants you to do this in minutes. So we'll multiply by the conversion factor of 1 minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. We do it that way so the seconds cancel. And so we'll pick up our calculators and process this. And when we do so, we can see the time comes out to be about 8.31. And again, the unit here will be in minutes. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Finally, moving on to part C, we need to figure out the time it takes a microwave signal to go from Earth to the moon and then back. Now, a microwave is basically going to be an electromagnetic wave. So that means it's still traveling at the speed of light. But the signal is going from one object to the other and back. It was going from Earth to the moon and then back. So you can imagine the signal traveling over here from Earth to the moon, bouncing off the moon and then traveling backwards to Earth. So we'll actually need to take the distance between Earth and the moon and double it because the total distance is not just D, but it's actually 2D because the signal has to return back to Earth. And so the time would still be the distance, but again, we're gonna do 2D divided by the speed of light. We'll look up the distance between the Earth and the Moon in our textbook. There's again an appendix located in the back of the book. It happens to be 3.84 times 10 to the eighth, and that's going to be in meters, and then divided by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And it is likely your homework system would want you to leave this answer in seconds. So we luckily don't have to make any conversion. The meters would cancel out, the seconds would come up to the numerator, and you'd have your answer in terms of seconds, which happens to be about 2.56 seconds. So this would be the correct answer to part C.